Thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm here uh, to present uh, the main findings of our recent uh, URDC report on increasing achievement and motivation in mathematics and science learning in schools. Um, I'm starting the presentation uh, with this image uh, of a rotor ride, uh, which represents excitement, fun, but also uh, the power of science. And the success of science teaching depends a lot on making students experience both at the same time. So how to make students interested in what they learn? This was one of the questions that we asked in the report. Today, uh, I'm going to start the presentation with just a few words on the URDC network uh, to know uh, what kind of sources uh, we were using in the report. Then I will go on with a few facts about science and math achievement across Europe. Um, what can be done to improve achievement and how to increase student interest. So let's uh, take these in turn. So the URDC network is a knowledge provider network of, uh, in, in, of 37 countries and 39 education systems. Um, what is important to note is that this information we are collecting through the URDC network is based on top level measures. So regulations, national curricula and so on and so forth which does not necessarily tell us everything what's happening in the classroom. Nevertheless, they give us clear direction of the intention of policymakers, which do influence, obviously, what's happening in schools. So let's start uh, with a few words on student achievement. Well, the information shown here, it comes from the OECD's uh, PISA survey from 2018. But we also looked at, uh, in the report, um, the IEA trends uh, in international mathematics and science study for fourth grade students. I will show you some, uh, some of its results uh, later. So what, 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 uh, what does it show? Uh, it shows the percentage of low achievers of 15-year-olds. Um, that is quite uh, stubbornly high in, uh, in, in Europe around a quarter of students, uh, of 15-year-old students in 2018 were considered uh, as low achievers uh, in Europe. And the figures also shows that uh, the picture is quite wide as uh, we have countries with uh, around 10% of low achievers, but also others with around 60%. The picture also well demonstrates that uh, percentage of, of low achievers tend to correlate across subject areas. So if a country has a very high percentage of low achievers in mathematics, it tends to have a high percentage of low achievers in science or other uh, disciplines. Most education systems also tend to perform similarly across education levels. So if the percentage of low achievers is high in primary education, it tends to remain high in lower secondary or later uh, levels of education. Education systems that tends to that manages that manage to, rel to do relatively well, they tend to have two important characteristics. First, they have relatively high average achievement scores, and second, they have smaller differences between high and low achieving students. So in case the percentage of low achievers is relatively low, it means that all students do relatively well on average. About the main determinants of low achievement, well, it's very well known that students from low socioeconomic backgrounds tend to have or have a bigger chance to become low achievers. And this is very important to note, and this is true in every single country and every single education system. Um, when we talk about um, mathematics and science education, another important factor that is usually mentioned is gender. But I have to say that uh, gender is, is less straightforward in terms of uh, determining uh, low achievement as a uh, socioeconomic uh, background. This uh, first uh, map shows the gender differences in the percentage of low achievers among fourth graders in mathematics based on the TIMS 2019 survey. As the figure shows, in most countries, the gender differences are not significant at all. Um, but there, there's virtually no difference in, in terms of uh, science achievement. But 
there are 12 countries where there is a higher share of low achievers among girls than among boys. So this might suggest that girls have a slight disadvantage in mathematics in primary education. And uh, interestingly, almost all educations with significant gender differences also have relatively high overall levels of low achievement. But this slight female disadvantage completely disappears uh, by the time the children reach age 15, so in secondary education. In secondary education, um, among 15-year-olds, percentage of, of low achievers in uh, mathematics are largely similar among girls and boys, but the significant difference is only in uh, seven education system. And these differences actually show that boys tend to be uh, more um, prone to uh, becoming uh, low achievers. And the same is uh, true for science in a slightly more uh, number of countries. So um, this, uh, by the time uh, of age 15, there is certainly uh, um, a, fail, a female advantage and that there are fewer uh, girls who are low achievers. So what can uh, be done to improve achievement? I'm going to discuss in the remaining part of the presentation uh, the main factors that can contribute to more students achieving basic nu numeracy and scientific li literacy, namely learning support during the formal school day, organized or delivered by remedial teachers throughout primary and lower secondary education, systematic monitoring of student achievement, mostly in the form of national testing administered already in primary education, longer overall instruction time, in for mathematics and science, especially in lower secondary education, and curriculum content that fosters uh, reflection and relates to students' lives. So let's take these factors in turn. First, learning support. So um, here we are looking at, again, as I said, the top level regulations on what schools should do uh, to, to support uh, learners who have difficulties. Top level authorities oblige schools to provide learning support for low achieving students in the large majority of education systems, but only about one quarter of them provide a very detailed framework to be strictly implemented by schools. Oh, I see a slides uh, show some uh, diff <laughs> strange letters there, but <laughs> please ignore them. So, um, one, but one main distinction um, when we talk about learning support is whether the support uh, should take place during or after the school day. And this is specified by top level authorities uh, in the majority of education systems. The most common way of supporting students uh, is through one-to-one -one or small group tutoring. Um, peer mentoring, so the mentoring of other students or the help of other students is rather rare. Other, other learning support measures uh, include summer schools or summer remedial instruction, individual learning programs, or even training workshops for families in some cases. Uh, differences between education levels are minimal, uh, though learning support frameworks are specified in uh, slightly more education systems at lower secondary level. What, can, what we can also see on the figure is that differences between mathematics and science are very small. The reason for this is that top-level frameworks usually uh, concern low achievement in general and not tied to specific subjects. Only a few education systems have specific frameworks on numeracy and mathematics, but none of them have anything on, on science. One important finding of our report is that on average, education systems requiring schools to provide support during the school day have lower percentage of, of, of low achieving students. So this emphasizes the effectiveness of immediate and timely availability of one-to-one -one or small group, group instruction during the day when all students are present. The, uh, the other factor which where, where we found uh, that, uh, that countries can make a difference is through the employment of remedial teachers. So education 
systems in which teachers with a specialization in supporting low achieving students, which we call remedial teachers, are when they are involved in learning support provision, then the countries tend to have lower percentage of low achievement. Um, currently, around one third of education systems employ such teachers, or this is where the top level authorities oblige schools to have um, to, 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 to have such teachers. When remedial teachers are not there, then the, the responsibility, the primary responsibility of, of support provision is, uh, the, is for, it's for the classroom teachers, so the, the regular class teachers. However, it's important to highlight that in the large, large majority of countries, there are shortages of mathematics and science teachers, which obviously have consequences not only on how low achievement, low achieving students can be supported, but how teaching can be provided in general. The third uh, point, uh, or third uh, area um, I'm going to talk about is systematic monitoring. So that's the provision of uh, national tests. Identifying students who lag behind is often the responsibility of schools. Thus, different schools and different teachers within the same school may ha have their own methods of evaluation, testing, and grading. In addition to this continuous monitoring in the classroom, national tests can provide a standardized reference level. Mathematics is more fre frequently the focus of national tests, especially in primary education. And uh, when they are organized, they are usually taken by all students. National tests in science are less widespread and often sample based. National tests are used for several purposes, mostly for monitoring the schools and the education systems in general. Um, compulsory top level testing with the objective of identifying individual learning needs explicitly, it only takes place in one third of the education systems. Education systems organizing certified examinations or national tests in mathematics at primary level tend to have lower percentage of low achievers. So this is also a finding of our report. The 28 systems with national tests in mathematics in primary education have on average around 23% of low achievers, while the 10 systems without such tests have almost 32%. Instruction time. Learning requires time. I think, I think it's, uh, it's quite evident. It's, uh, <laughs> um, we, we can all agree. Uh, so what do we know about instruction time uh, for mathematics and science in Europe? We know that more instruction time is dedicated to mathematics than to science in general. If we add the hours dedicated to math in primary and lower secondary education, that this constitutes around 16% of the total instruction time on average in Europe, while science lessons take up around 11%. The number of hours dedicated to mathematics exceeds the number allocated to science in all education systems in primary education and in the majority of them in lower secondary education. We also know that instruction time for mathematics is greater, and greater at primary level than at lower secondary level in most education systems. But for science, the opposite is true. In the majority of the education systems, the number of hours dedicated to uh, science subjects in secondary education is, double, uh, is at least double of that of, of primary education. Instruction time alone does not explain differences in low achievement levels. But if we, con in, um, if we look at um, the, low, uh, the low achievement at lower secondary level, then if we control for, we take into account the pre-existing level of low achievement, so the level of pro low achievement in primary education and the type of learning support students receive, then the controlling for these two factors, more instruction time, more instruction hours are associated with lower rates of 15 year old students with poor numeracy and uh, scientific literacy skills. So we get to the, the final point, uh, how to increase students' interests. To answer this, um, 
We, in the report, we have explored the presence of various topics in national curricula that may increase students' interest in mathematics and science. Of course, curricula do not tell us exactly, as I said, what happens in the classroom. But we assume that if a topic is part of the curriculum, then it, this increases the likelihood that the topic is addressed in the classroom. Uh, still, other topics could be mentioned in textbooks, and we didn't analyze textbooks uh, because there is a great variety of textbooks usually uh, which are used uh, in, by teachers. So we, we stayed uh, with the curriculum. Our analysis showed that real-life real examples of mathematics as part of curricula in, are part of the curricula in, in primary and lower secondary education in all education systems. These kind of real-life examples include cooking, uh, money and shopping, architecture and so on. So these are, these are used everywhere. On the other hand, context-based science teaching through the history of science or through the inclusion of ethical questions or socio-scientific issues, it's much less common. What do we mean by socio-scientific questions? They refer to open-ended social problems with the conceptual links to science. In our analysis, we found that education systems, which include socio-scientific questions in their science curriculum, tend to have lower percentages of low achievers among 15 year olds. And this is what we refer to as a curriculum that fosters reflection. This slide illustrates the kind of society, socio-scientific questions uh, that we addressed uh, during the curriculum analysis. As you can see, um, science and ethics issues are not very commonly addressed uh, in the 39 education systems uh, we analyzed. This figure um, is actually taking into account uh, mostly lower secondary education or grades five to eight. Um, while, while references are there in the, for around half of the countries, concrete issues such as uh, ethical considerations in animal testing, they are rather rare. And this map uh, of Europe shows which countries include such uh, science and ethics questions in their curricula during the first eight grades of school. Uh, in order to show the relationship with science achievement, countries that have fewer than 20% of low achievers in science are marked in diagonal. And uh, on the right-hand side, you can see the average proportion of, of low achievers in countries with and without uh, socio-scientific questions in their curriculum. And the differences between uh, the two proportions is significant. So uh, this was largely my presentation. Uh, to conclude, um, what works is, is to catch those uh, falling behind early and help them up, give extra support during school hours, train specialist teachers, provide time to learn and engage students to reflect. Thank you for your attention. If you are interested, uh, you can have a look uh, in our of our reports. They are freely uh, downloadable from our website.